there was a report that I read the other day that came from the Montgomery Advertiser, and the Montgomery public school system was recently engaged in an audit, and you know that there's been a, a big hoopla about how the Montgomery public schools have been run, and because of that, there is uh, they've had a state takeover, and they're trying to figure out where all the problems in Montgomery public schools are. So they did this audit, and it found seven hundred thousand dollars of misuse. In other words, the funds being used for something that had nothing to do with the education of our young people. Now, this isn't just waste or misallocation. It, it isn't as though they bought, you know, too many textbooks or something like that, or, or the funds wound up buying the wrong athletic equipment or something. No, no, no. This is actually the people in that are being charged here, the people that have been brought up in this audit, actually stole or mishandled money that they should have used for education that went to other purposes. And so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to just go through one by one each of the individuals that were brought up in this article and tell you exactly what it is that they're accused of and how they mishandled these funds to give you a better idea of it. And we'll, we'll start out small and then go big and, and end off with the one that has the biggest, uh, the biggest mishandling of funds in the Montgomery Public School System. So before I delve off into this, I do want to say something to start out with. I am not a person that is anti-teacher or anti-public education. I never have been. I'm a product of the public school system. Now, some of you may hear that and say, okay, maybe there is a good reason to not like the public school system. But no, I I'm an advocate of the public school system. I like the public school system. And it turns out some, some good students, and there are some really good, fine, dedicated teachers. I mean, some of the best people that I know, we just had some FFA members in here, which is a in the state of Alabama, at least, an exclusively public school youth organization. Other states have it to where you can have it in private school, but here in Alabama, that is something that is only in the public schools. And that was something that had a tremendous impact on my life. Most of the skills that I use every single day on this program, I learned in that program. So I'm not anti-public school. And remember that my father is a retired ag teacher. One of the finest people that I know. I could say the same thing about people like Joe Hopper, one of the best math teachers I've ever had. Uh, Margaret Harris. Uh, you could go down the list. I could name off, rattle off at least a dozen teachers. Karen Brown, different people that, that had a huge impact on my life and taught me a lot. But here's the thing. When it comes to the Montgomery Public School System, the system is rotten to the core. That does not mean there are not some good teachers in the Montgomery Public School System. In fact, I'm friends with a couple of them. And so I know there are good people that are just trying to do the right thing that really care about these kids and really want them to have a good education. It is not a slam against those people to point out that there is corruption and that this thing is so corrupt that it needs to be rooted out tree, uh, tree branch, and root. Everything needs to come out of this thing. We, we've got to do some major overhauls. And this is just a testament to that because the thing is, for, every, for the good teachers that are really trying their best, that really want to make a difference, that really care about the children in these Montgomery public schools, they deserve better. So obviously this is about the kids, and primarily that's always going to be the focus, but they deserve a better administration that is better suited to back them up and does not misuse the funds and the public trust that those teachers have been given because this makes the whole system look bad. And so that is why I'm saying that it is things like this that actually good teachers are the ones that will be the most fervent in saying that, no, we don't need to do this. This isn't a good idea. We need to root that corruption out. Just like there's nothing that irritates a good cop more than a dirty cop. It's the same thing with the teachers. Nothing irritates a good teacher that's just trying to do the right thing. It, there's nothing that bugs them more than people that are stealing for their own benefit from the system. I mean, especially as a teacher, if you're somebody that has gone out and spent your own money, and by the way, my family did this because my dad was a teacher, gone out and bought school supplies and had to pay for things that really he, they shouldn't have had to pay for, and then you hear that there are people like this, people that are your employers or your supervisors, 
that are going out and stealing a whole bunch of money that could have been used for things like that to benefit themselves, you can see very quickly why public school teachers would be somebody that is absolutely against that. So these are some of the charges that have been brought up. So first of all, we'll start out with Gary Hall. Now, Gary Hall is at a Carver High, or, or was at Carver High. I believe he still is, actually. And he was a principal. The dollar amount that was found to be wasted or, or missing, misallocated, was $2,045. Uh, $2, and the story behind how this took place is that he was supposed to pay for state championship rings for, I believe it was their basketball team. And they went to go ahead and get the rings. They were a couple thousand dollars short, and so he misallocated funds. He used funds that he wasn't supposed to to pay for the rest of it. So they had, I think it was about $13,000, and then they just went and, and paid the extra 2000 on top of that to be able to, to top it off. And then after the audit, they found out that this money was missing, that it was not used for the correct uh, purpose, and so they tracked it down, and what happened is Gary Hall has paid it back. So a misuse of funds for sure, especially from somebody that is a principal that is supposed to know better, that is supposed to be better at, at, at doing stuff like this, that is the one that's supposed to be responsible for things like this, used funds he was not supposed to, he was not authorized to, on something that, let's be honest, it's a good thing, but it has nothing to do with education. And so... What we have here is a situation where a teacher used money that he shouldn't have on something for the students. Bad, but at least he is using it on something that is for the students. I'm not saying that excuses it or that we should overlook it or give him a pass or anything like that. I'm just saying that it wasn't like he was going out and buying stuff for himself. And so uh, he has paid it back and everything has been settled. So... That's really the case that is the most benign when it comes to this. Now, this next one, not so much. So uh, there was no picture for this one, but uh, Michael Walker, who also at Carver High and was the JROTC instructor. Now, the, the final dollar amount was $44,000 with Walker, and I would tell you what they spent the money on, but the thing is, we don't know. That money just went missing, and so they didn't just use the funds to do something that may or may not have been uh, authorized or that they just you know may, may have bought something that they shouldn't have using school funds. No, they just straight up took the money. So that's one that they're going to have a, a hard time rectifying, and, and I'm sure that they have their legal team working on that as is. Th this one was just straight up stolen. And this teacher, this instructor, I believe, is no longer with the school, thank goodness. Now this one, Chauncey Shines. So Mr. Shines here, a teacher and athletic director at Brutech High, the total dollar amount, about the same as the last one, $46,000. And this one is really bad because it almost would make you feel better if he just straight up stole the money and then went and spent it and we had no idea what it was spent on. But we actually do have in the school budget after this audit was conducted, we know where that money went. We found it, uh, found out where that money was going to. And he spent it on strip clubs, on a local bar. There were several bills to that. Also, online gam gaming. Now, that seems to be a nice way of saying gambling. I don't know. Maybe he was playing World of Warcraft. And, <laughs> and it doesn't look like the World of Warcraft type. But maybe he was. Maybe it was World of Warcraft and he was just paying his monthly subscription fee to be able to you know, go out and uh, play on one of those online games. But it seems when they say online gaming, what they're actually suggesting is that it was gambling. And it also said video sites. Now, we're on YouTube right now. And as most of you know, that's where most people go for videos and YouTube is free. There's a few others, Venmo, that kind of thing. They're pretty much all free. So then you have to ask yourself the question, huh, what kind of video site was he paying for? Now, I don't know this for sure. And... I don't want to say anything that I can't prove. 
But so keep in mind, this is speculation, but it seems as though if he's paying for an internet video site, it's probably porn. You know, maybe the evidence will come out and show that it was, I don't know, some kind of weird video service or something like that, a, a subscription to, you know, goats or something. May, I don't know, maybe Netflix, but it almost seems weird to classify Netflix as a video site. So I, I'm just going to throw out a guess here. It, it seems as though what he was spending the money on was pornography, and that's an exorbitant amount of money to spend on these things. And, uh, the, the idea that he's stealing from kids to be able to use this money on these horribly uh, scrupulous things, these vices of his alcohol strip clubs. And, and that's another reason why I think it may be porn sites is because he's also, if you're going to spend money from the school that you've stolen on a strip club, you probably don't have any shame about spending it on a porn site either. So that's a, a fairly, fairly decent guess. And what was going on there? Uh, this next one, James Jackson, the former basketball coach at Carver High. By the way, I want you to notice that Carver High seems to have a, a real problem with this. There have been several already listed, three in, in total, that these corruption cases have come from Carver. Carver needs to get its ducks in a row. But the former basketball coach from there, uh, money wasted was $77,000. And according to the report, it was spent on liquor, a local wine and liquor store, various restaurants, car rental places. And I'm just looking at this going, how on earth do you rack up $77,000 on booze, restaurants, and car rentals? Now, there were several other things too, but these all seem like minor things. So I don't know if he was just spending a lot of money at one time or spending it for several people? Like, was he taking the whole team out to drink? <laughs> Which is another problem if that took... I don't think that took place, but um, would, would be a completely new issue considering that they would be high school students. But I, I don't see how you rack up that much money. I, I The only thing that I can think of is when he's going out to these restaurants or going out and buying booze or whatever, that he must be using it for multiple people because I don't see how in that short amount of time, you wind up wasting $77,000. But hey, who knows? Maybe maybe he's just a lot better at spending money than I am. I don't know. Uh, absolutely despicable. And this next one, Marsha uh, Ball, and she is a teacher at Brutech High. The money wasted is $177,000. And what this money was spent on was fake scholarships. Now, you may be sitting there scratching your head going, what do you mean, fake scholarships? What's, what's going on here, Cockwit? So here's what it is. This particular scholarship, these two scholarships that together measured up to $177,000, it came from a scholarship fund, and the recipients of these scholarships, there were only two of them. Her benefactor was her mother, and the only two recipients were her children. And the qualifications for this particular scholarship, that included things like maintaining a certain GPA and writing an essay, a personal essay to enter into this to be considered for the scholarship. None of that was happening. Neither of these two recipients fulfilled those requirements. And so what happened is, despite not fulfilling the requirements of the scholarship and, and despite nobody else being considered for the scholarship, somehow magically the children of this woman wound up with the scholarships. So that's how that bill got racked up. As you can imagine, there was some home cooking going on here. And then finally, and this is the really big one, Walter James, who formerly of Jefferson Davis High School as the assistant principal, wound up wasting $300,000. So out of the 7, 700000 that was wasted, he wasted almost half of it. And there aren't a lot of details given on this when it just says fictitious vendors, which probably means that he just stole it. Either that or he had friends that created a shell company or something that sounded like it was real and then he would pass it along to them to kind of launder it and then take some for himself. Maybe his buddies get a cut. I don't know. But he's either just making up 
vendors and pocketing the money himself, or he's got other people that he's got as a run between as a launderer. But either way, this is not looking good for Walter James because he's just making up imaginary vendors, imaginary people like an, an imaginary textbook company, for example, and he's writing checks to them and yet they can't verify that these vendors actually existed or that any good or service actually came for the benefit of the school with this. And I find this incredibly interesting because apparently, according to this article, James is now an attorney operating in Montgomery. So that's going to be real interesting to see if, you know, there's some kind of disbarment or something like that. I, I will be really fascinated to see where that goes. But the thing is, and, and I don't have to tell you this, but it it bears repeating just because of the circumstances surrounding the situation. It is utterly, utterly disgusting to take money that was intended to be used for kids, for their education, and steal it to use it for yourself. I mean, I guess it would be technically worse if you were, like, stealing from orphans on Christmas Eve, but there's not a whole lot lower than stealing from children. Especially when the Montgomery Public Schools has, for a long time, had some major budget issues, could really use that money, and that these kids are primarily intercity kids that are underprivileged and could really, really benefit from this. And now I say that, Two of the incidents happened at Brutech, which is a magnet school. So they're not immune to this either, but especially at Carver and Jefferson Davis, where there are a lot of kids that, that there's a high rate of poverty in those schools. Um, to take money intended for those kids, intended for those kids to get a better education so they can have a better future, and just use it for yourself, especially on some of the things that we were seeing, bars, liquor, porn sites, strippers. Like, you have to be a pretty low-down human being to get to that point. And they should be ashamed of themselves. But I think that this is a glaring example of why it is so incredibly difficult to trust the government with money. And I'm not saying that every government employee does stuff like this, because you have to remember, there's an awful lot of people employed by the Montgomery Public Schools, and we only have six cases of this going on, but it goes to show how even a small number of people in the public sphere that are working for the government that are untrustworthy could wind up costing the government quite a bit of money. Because look at six people and seven hundred thousand dollars, that's more than a hundred thousand dollars a person. That's a ridiculous amount. And so because of that, it's important for us to, to look at that and, and understand why people are skeptical when you say, let's, let's just give the government all our money and we'll trust them to sort it out. And that's true whether you're talking about here at the local level or you're going all the way up to the nationals and you're looking at your Elizabeth Warrens and your Bernie Sanders saying, you know what, we're going to take more of your money and don't worry, trust us, we'll put it to good use and we'll decide how it's going to be spent. And we're like, mm, no, no, a little skeptical of that, don't trust that. It's stuff like this on the local level that makes people question, rightfully so, some of the shenanigans that goes on even at the upper levels of government, because this is a citywide thing. This isn't even a, an Alabama state thing. This is specifically something only happening in one city, and yet they're screwing people out of their tax dollars that are supposed to go to help kids in need of an education, and instead are being used to fund the vices of these individuals. And that's why that public trust isn't there, and that's why I, I think that it shouldn't be there. Because government is prone to corruption by its very nature. And that's one of the reasons that I'm such an advocate of a small government to where even if the people are horribly corrupt, they can't do that much damage because there's not a whole lot of damage to do. They can't steal that much money because you're not taking in a whole lot in taxes in the first place. They can't destroy the system because the system has so very little power that even if they do something evil and corrupt and bad, it may hurt some people, but the damage will be minimized. Ultimately, this is a great testament to why low taxation and smaller government is the way to go. And when that takes place, and when there is less power, and when the government isn't able to do as many things, the draw to a corrupt person isn't nearly as strong. Because 
if you think about it, if there is somebody that wanted to do something nefarious and break the law and get rich quick and all those other things that would go with that, if he's looking at crime outside the government or crime inside the government and the crime inside the government just doesn't pay all that well, well, then it makes sense that that corruption is not going to be brought into the government. There are a few people that are going to go to a lot of trouble if there's not a lot of payoff on that. And so it, it disincentivizes government corruption to a great degree. But that's the ideal. Dealing with what we're dealing with now, I think that it's, it's just more prominent and obvious than ever that the government running this thing does not deserve more of our tax dollars, which is ironic because just earlier last week, the city of Montgomery passed an occupational tax. And they said that the reason that they were going to pass it, even though they did not specifically verify where the funds were going, and we'll get to that in a second, is that they were going to spend some of the money on education. This is why people don't believe you, and this is why they're skeptical of you when you say, hey, we need the money. Because A, in this case, you're not even designating what we need the money for, and B, and I think this is more important, that you don't even use the money that you've got responsibly. You don't even use the money that we have already given you, that you've already, let me rephrase that, taken from us under penalty of law. You're not even using that correctly. Why should we trust you with more money? Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade. <laughs>